Hi everyone, uh, welcome, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Francesco Mazzarella. I work here at, L at LCF as a senior lecturer in fashion and design for social change. And I'm based at Center for Sustainable Fashion. This is somehow not very related to my role, but maybe possibly yes, because it all started that you wanted to give a lecture to the MA Fashion Future students where I teach, but then we decided to open up. Uh, and also as researchers, we've been con connected for a long time, maybe since 2016. First time uh, meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but first time in uh, real life. Uh, I think we met, well, we connected during our PhDs. I was doing mine at uh, in Loughborough University and uh, and well, and you were at Alto already, but uh, I was going to go to Parsons, which is where it's uh, where you did your masters, mm -hmm. and I really liked your systemic approach to design. Um, that's uh, what connected us, and we've been uh, yet connected and inspiring each other, I think, for a long time. So <laughs> thanks for coming uh, in person, yes. and uh, and it's your first time at LCF, possibly. Yes, yes. very much. Uh, and also, it's maybe one of the last times in this building because we're moving to Stratford in September. So, um, uh, so we decided, so considering how inspiring you are, uh, we thought to open up this event, not only to students, staff at LCF and beyond, and the public. And, and actually, that it was sold out within one day, so I guess uh, there is lots of uh, uh, expectation and curiosity around these topics. Um, so today we will discuss what does it mean to be a fashion designer in the 21st century? And what role can fashion designers play in the contemporary society beyond the industry? Um, as Nam Kyo say, uh, these can be considered as somehow basic questions for important creative practices, such as fashion design. However, surprisingly, the subject of fashion design is underexplored, uh, significantly impacted by ambiguity and complexity that the term fashion brings. With the fluid involvement to both the material production of clothes and the material production of fashion, fashion design and its profession can make distinctive contributions compared to other creatives through their unique fashion design thinking. Critically interviewing discussions from research fields of design and fashion in this lecture, uh, Nam Kyo Chun will talk about how we can reimagine the social role of fashion designers and their contribution to placemaking. So I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Nam Kyu Chun, who holds a Doctor of Arts from Aalto University and who came all the way from Finland. Um, and also he holds an MFA in trans Transdisciplinary Design from Parsons, the New School of Design. He, and he is now lecturer in Design Communication at Aalto University in Finland. He has been interested in critically engaging with discourses on design practices while questioning the social role of the fashion design profession. Upon noticing the absences of both fashion designers' voices in design research and designing in fashion research, he investigated distinctive features of fashion design that embrace meaning production of fashion and material production of clothes. By rediscovering the ignored tradition of dressmaking caused by social prejudices, his research aimed at recovering the social role of the fashion design profession that has been overshadowed by the image-making tendency of the industry. Further expanding his interest, currently is being involved in the EU-funded research project Creative Practices for Transformational Futures, while actively developing the research-informed design education approach at Aalto University. And also, I forgot to say at the beginning, this event is being filmed. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Otherwise, let us know. Um, okay, over to you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I prepared the opening slide with the language that I can't think of, so sorry for limited knowledge, maybe, if I don't happen to include your language. Uh, so again, hello. Uh, and uh, I mean, as Francesco introduced myself, uh, my name is Nam Kyu. Uh, I'm from Finland, uh, although I don't maybe look like typical Finnish person, but I have been living, studying, working over eight years now. So, I mean, I, I have a bit of Finnish sensibility of you know certain way to be or behave so uh, so please please understand in a way if there is certain bit of cultural awkward moment but you know I, I will try my best to be as sensitive as possible in terms of culture so let me begin uh, my talk uh, but maybe I mean I will say one more thing so one before I forget, I would like to thank Francesco also for giving this opportunity to give this lecture. Of course, uh, it was 
bit of improvisation, but I was extremely happy to have opportunity to actually have this conversation, not just with him, but also faculty member, but extended community in London. You know, I was walking around a Sloan Street to this, you know, High Street, whatever, but I could feel the, I mean, it's a great reminder of, you know, how it is to be in this fashion capital, one of the fashion capital, and then the energy made me a bit, I think, chick, I mean, blushed chick in a way. <laughs> so I, I, it's a great reminder, you know, how is it to be part of this kind of big city and a big fashion capital like London? Because Helsinki is in a way very different. And of course, I will share some of the, my uh, finding and experiences from my residence in Finland in the north, but you know, you hopefully you enjoy what I have gone through. So uh, to continue the introduction, I'm from South Korea originally, uh, not the North Korea. <laughs> and I did some studies, you know, and working in different fields and moving to New York for my master's and also further career in journalism and some design consulting job. Then after that, I moved to Finland in 2014 to pursue my academic career in, 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 uh, at Aalto University. So uh, as you can see, I, I, can, I can say that I have been having quite messy you know, career, academically, professionally speaking. And uh, life-wise also, it was quite, in a way, interesting to organize myself uh, and keep myself somehow as a one piece, integrated one piece. But in that you know, messy journey, there has been one question that bugged me quite heavily. I mean, I mean there, are many, there have been many questions, but I think this question has been something that I resonated because I have been going through different phases in my life, moving from different continents, but also in different fields, like you know, from nonprofit to fashion to journalism and design, etc. So this question got me thinking uh, you know, what, I mean, this question got me, you know, I got this question when I was, you know, changing career or entering different field. And, but at the end, like looking back where I started my academic journey as a fashion design bachelor, you know, what, what, what fashion designer can do other than, you know, working in the industry? That question actually was the starting point of my journey. And, you know, perhaps this can be quite relatable for you guys here in the big city in London. I mean, this was like quick calculation already back in 2000, maybe 14, 15. So it's outdated number. But just to calculate, you know, the intake number from different school, I could easily come up with this number. And then I was quite struck by this number and number of I mean, different culture that we could, I could realize. I mean, that's how they promote. This is how many people from different culture we have in our university and et cetera, and the admission page and et cetera. And then just to count from two schools, this number for your information is not from this other school, but only from these two rather known fashion school. It was like quite, you know, shockingly over oh, nearly, you know, 1,500 students from all over the world. And then that made me think then, you know, is there a job for them? You know, is the industry, there is a job waiting for them after graduating from this school. It's not even cheap, you know, it's to study fashion is not a cheap, you know. It's quite a luxurious thing in a way to, you know, pay all this, you know, uh, study loan and et cetera. But then more than that, actually what is more interesting or striking or sad for me personally was they are quite, you know, chasing this uh, more or less the glamorous image of the celebrity designers. I wouldn't say their name. I assume you know who they are. But the uh, reality was actually quite different. Like, you know, how many people can become like them? You know, even if you think of, you know, and this is just the case of New York. But, you know, if you think of London, New York, Milan, like Paris all combined, you know, it's like quite crazy, you know, but that they are all chasing after this very exclusive space that very few people occupy, manage to occupy, even in certain young age. So then today I prepare my talk 
to personally share my journey, but at the same time, somehow spice up with my academic professional you know, experiences. So I will start with some of the background of my talk and introducing my approach and uh, concluding with uh, finding from my research and you know, other work. So the first part is about defining fashion design. As Francesco mentioned, like some of the reason why fashion design being under, ex under study is coming from complexity that this six letter word make, fashion. And today I'm gonna guide you through a little bit of what it means to actually define or study fashion design. And the definition, question about definition on fashion design actually emerged from my master. During my master, I was introduced to many new practices of design. Uh, I actually didn't study fashion design in my master, but I was extremely excited to be introduced to these many new practices, you know, service design, human center, whatever, like something related to design. I was like, okay, there are so many other design, you know, that then, I usually think it's more than, of course, making furniture or clothes. And I mean, this so many different role that I recognized during my master's really excited me to actually go deeper to question then how about fashion design. And there I realized then there is a certain gap uh, that we don't know. And fashion design, I mean, nowadays we often consider, I mean, there are certain criticism, ongoing criticism from sustainable movement. I mean, as a result, we have Center for Sustainable Fashion and et cetera. It's already quite outdated, like several decades, right? This question is going. But then it has been like, you know, never ending story, right? But this criticism made us think, but at the same time, there is a new opportunities with something like digital fashion. There are people try to come up with new practice with the uh, emerging new technology and etc. But yet yeah, still the core of fashion design, what fashion design is and how we should define it was still quite unknown. Like we just kind of understand from our own practice or what we see from this media coverage or certain video that we are invited to consume or through maybe Instagram page nowadays, we get to see a bit of reality a little bit, but still yet it's quite hard to grasp what fashion design actually means or what it actually can contribute. What's the value of fashion design in other words? I don't know how would you define fashion, but this is my, one of my favorite definition of fashion because it's such a simple and somehow easy to relate to uh, how we actually deal with fashion. Uh, uh, Malcolm Bernard uh, defined fashion as what people wear. Uh, so in a way, what we see on the street, so it's not in a way dictated by some people, but it's actually people who somehow define what fashion is in this very moment. And that somehow inclusive definition of fashion made me think that, okay, it's not something that fashion designer or fashion design can dictate that claim to design. So from uh, the Loshek's uh, book, When, fashion, When Clothes Become Fashion, she argued that what fashion designer can only make is actually clothes. And they aim to make fashion, but in order for them to make, turn clothes into fashion, they need certain social process, you know, actually, you know, so in a way that people need to somehow agree that this is something, okay, cool and enjoyable and represent that social very moment of our understanding of the world, uh, wherever you are located. But then I'm not talking, I mean, so in a way, next stage perhaps to define fashion is, you know, what I mean by fashion design, who, who they are that who is practicing fashion design. Are they, I mean, am I, am I talking about those who are, you know, we study from the history book like Coco Chanel or <coughs> Christian Dior. We know all this, you know, if you are in the fashion school. I mean, it doesn't matter if you study design or communication or marketing, you study them. But I'm not talking about those who are in the exclusive position who, you know, as I said, hardly, you know, 
quite handful of people can become like those. But I'd like to study those who actually occupy majority of the profession of fashion design, who actually practice fashion design as their job. So in a way that not those who we see in the Vogue or whatever magazine, but you know, like me and everyone else who maybe you know work in this big company or practice you know not under someone else's name. I mean, they may practice someone else's name, but at the same time, they consider they have certain skills, very domain-specific skills and knowledge, and with that, they practice what they believe as their profession. So I'm talking about those anonymous professional fashion designer when I refer here today fashion design or fashion designers. And then going back to this, uh, you know, what fashion design can produce, it's, if it's about the, uh, you know, clothes making, but in a way they aim to produce the symbolic fashion. Uh, but then again, this production and the consumption system is quite complex that it's hard to understand who are actually involved and uh, what kind of procedure, you know, what kind of steps are required. So if you, I mean, we in the fashion school, we understand fashion is not grown from tree. But I mean, if you think, you know, if you don't study fashion, it's quite understandable that people think that, if you think about Zara, H&M, they produce like, you know, <laughs> even faster than some uh, produces and crops. So. Maybe pe some people think that you harvest clothes as a complete product, you know. But then in reality, there are so many people involved in so many layers and this kind of complexity and complex relationship, not just the global level, but local. And that this interchange of, you know, value and all this relationship is something make fashion design is extremely difficult to understand. So the first challenge that I here I'd like to introduce is this complexity of fashion, especially from the systemic point of view. And second, in what I like very much is this social prejudice against fashion design. Uh, if you think of fashion, and especially, I mean, just look at us. Uh, I mean, I myself is uh, male, and I mean, at least not white, but <laughs> I am male. Uh, at least I perceive myself as male, and then, but then at the same time, there is certain prejudice against fashion that is uh, very much, you know, gendered practice. And then, you know, but then at the same time, if you see this very exclusive role, there is a certain group representing that whole system, which is quite misleading. Uh, but at the same time, when we are talking about fashion, I mean, we, everybody knows, like, we have this conversation that fashion being the second skin and et cetera. But when we are actually talking about, you know what, the fashion has this theory and all that thing, and then people will question you back like, why do you even need to study? I mean, is it something, isn't it something we just talk on the magazine, you know, like, or, you know, what is the next it back, you know, next color to buy, things like this. Why do we need to even study? So there are certain prejudice that, you know, people think that fashion is something it's not necessarily important to study, dedicating your life to, you know, explore. But if you look into the more than fashion, fashion design, in the design field, we, we have certain hierarchy. Uh, so because of the certain way that we can learn, how easy is it to become fashion designer? If you think of architect, they have certain, you know, association, recognizing them as a certified architect who can sign when they are building this certain, you know, construction. But fashion design, actually, if you think, anybody can become fashion designer. I mean, you just need, like, you don't need to actually study fashion design. You just need the money and connection. When I was studying fashion design, people often ask me, so you have a good connection, or your father is rich, or something like that. But then, like, why, what, what's to do with my parents? I'm, I'm interested in studying fashion design. I'm interested in learning how to sew and cut and things, but what's to do with my own background, etc. And this kind of, you know, hierarchy in design subfield actually make fashion design also place the bottom of, you know, pyramid that makes also bring social prejudice to study fashion as a part of design practice. And looking into actually the more to the fashion 
research side, not the studying the fashion design, there is an absence of designing. So the actual practice of design is quite you know, lacking in terms of like volume of study compared to fashion as a social phenomenon or historic you know, curatorial practice and et cetera. So this, I mean, this is like just few uh, example of social prejudice that I have recognized thanks to other scholars that I have listed here. But then this kind of social prejudice make fashion design as a something that we shouldn't study. And these two layers of challenge, first, the complexity of fashion as a system, second, social prejudice against fashion design make extremely difficult fashion design to somehow flourish and somehow to be seen as an important subject to study. And then looking back to what my mastery was about, I heard, I, I was sensing there is a, a absence of voice of fashion design there. So I decided, okay, if nobody's studying, then maybe I should study. So here we are. And this, is, this was in a way then my approach to look into designing fashion, how fashion design as a practice should be studied and what it actually means. A starting point, actually this is a very interesting journey and uh, I will tell you a little bit later. Uh, I was watching this Wim Wenders film, quite rather old, uh, but then I, was, I needed some, you know, emptying my brain while write, working on my dissertation. And then he said something quite interesting, this quote, I'm not a fashion designer, I'm a dressmaker. And then I was like, huh, why he say this? You know, wh where is this dressmaker suddenly coming from? And then I was actually thinking, I mean, of course I was studying when I was writing about fashion design and history, brief history of fashion design. Of course, this French term occur, haute couture. And then my, my other half who is Latin, speaker, a Brazilian Portuguese speaker, introduced me to this world of language that has a gender. And then that made me think that, okay, let me just search. And I searched couturier, uh, masculine noun in uh, French, literally just Google translate. And I got some result. And the female feminine noun, couturierie, sorry for my French, but that gave very different definition. Do you know what kind of definition I got, result? Any guess? Mm -hmm. Yes, precisely. And you can search now. I think it remained the same. Like it was quite striking. The ma masculine noun in English from French translation was fashion designer, while the feminine noun, couturierie, was translated as a dressmaker. So this was a great example for me to find, actually, you know, encounter this certain prejudice against the practice of fashion design. And I was like, huh, this is like so, I mean, I was like dreaming about this. Like, this is the reason why fashion design wasn't studied, you know. I was waking up in the nightmare from, I was chased by Niza Cross to Brian Lawson to kiss towards all the male design scholar. How dare you try to tell this story, you know. But then I was like, okay, this actually has been studied quite heavily in fashion. So, yeah, but I was just one made that connection in, in while talking about fashion design. And I have a two uh, guest image here that with the voice of them, I'd like to somehow introduce such an important approach to make here. So Guy Julier, who wrote the book Culture of Design, native British, he talks about when something is called design, there is a reason. So in other words, design is discursive. So we have to think about the intention when we say something. And then Angela McRobie, who I deeply admire, also talks about in this her seminal book, British Fashion, fashion education, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, certain, you know, practice is, you know, overlooked and, you know, there is a tendency, she adds very critical view on fashion education in Britain, UK, and somehow introduce certain tendency why, you know, dressmaking aspect, the material, materiality of, or construction of clothes was, you know, somehow less emphasized. And she argued for the dressmaking dimension to be retrieved 
to values recognized in fashion culture, I mean, that is 1998, and see where we are 20 years after, remain <coughs> more or less same, right? I mean, of course, Femna Valenciaga designer recently said he will put the making clothes as a center of coming fashion show. Let's see what's, what comes up. But to somehow summarize my approach in a way that moving from the, the, the mainstream discussion or mainstream uh, overview of fashion design with the image making practice of fashion design, but moving to more towards dressmaking. And I'd like to overcome these challenges that I introduced earlier, this complexity and prejudice against fashion design to answer what it means to be a fashion designer in the very moment. And it's not just my own question when I was engaging with the other designer and student who are learning to become fashion designer. This has been, I think, more or less the same question. That's, I believe, the reason why I also had uh, this many uh, participants registering this event. But at the same time, I was confirming that after five years, after my dissertation was published, still remain somehow relevant question. So this question was somehow explored different way, but in order for me to you know, answer to this question again, I needed some special lens. So in a way, uh, I prepared, I mean, I, my research was about like looking into, of course, the main question was about exploring the social role of fashion design profession, but I had to come up with these two layers. First was about how fashion designer work, because my main intention was, as I introduced, it was more about what other role fashion designer can play outside industry. But then I quickly realized, because of the, all the social prejudice and complexity, actually what fashion designer do, how fashion designer work, was heavily understudied. So in order for me to actually understand what others they can do, I need to study then what they actually do. So that got me to study these two layers in a way, but at the same time, that was to study the social role of fashion design profession. Then, I mean, you know this perhaps print, uh, quite iconic print. Uh, with this big question in mind, I moved to Finland uh, where, you know, fashion is considered, I mean, it's relatively very small. The presence of fashion in Finland is very, very, you know, minimal compared to especially London, Paris, New York, Milan. I mean, even compared to Seoul, where I'm from and etc. And many people question why the heck I moved from New York to Finland to study fashion design. And this question I got like, I don't know, so many times. And then my always question is then, you know, when I want to study such thing, if I'm in London or New York, it'll be considered something, you know, why do you have to study this? I mean, it's something that is kind of already established. And then in order for me to find like relevant, you know, fashion designer to study, there are so many, I mean, sample size is like massive. I can't even touch, you know, I don't know how many years I have to study in order to cover maybe, I don't know, some percentage. But then, in a way, Finland, Helsinki, was like relatively good scale for me. And uh, it was emerging place, so uh, I had a certain merit. And uh, these are the, some of the merit that I had. It was very much emerging. Uh, uh, they had a very much many emerging fashion uh, initiative, a grassroots approaches, but at the same time, Thanks to the Art University and the young designer, it got quite good visibility in the global fashion context. And they had a very heavily on this artistic approach, which is slightly different than I think the, the fashion capital in a way. Uh, but then at the same time, the, the fashion designers are very much running their own business, meaning that they have a certain autonomy in making decisions themselves instead of influenced by merchandiser or marketer, etc. So in a way that it was perfect playground for me to actually see how fashion designer actually make clothes or why, what's the basis for making the decision. And lastly, of course, certain convenient reason, like, you know, it was all cluster in that Helsinki metropolitan area, 
which is actually not so big, and the number of fashion designer, I mean, I can manage. I can say that after five years of my, I mean, four years of my doctoral dissertation research, I would say I know them quite well. <laughs> it was quite easy to break that barrier and be part of the community, a center of the community from many layers. So let's go to move to the, the beef, the, my own finding from the doctoral research and how fashion, I rediscovered fashion design through my research. So as I said, it had two layers. So part one was about how fashion designer actually work. In order for that, I introduced one Italian person other than Francesco at Gio Manzini. He introduced design as a more than practice, as actually culture. Uh, it has a different aspect of not just, you know, like people practicing as a, you know, skill, etc. but it somehow has its own culture as a, you know, community of individual and heavily inspired by this uh, notion of design I was uh, I was approaching fashion in this more or less two layer one from uh, dressmaking practice of individual fashion designer I mean you can say that individual designer they have their own you know practice repertoire or the way that they deal with the clothes and etc or they learn something from education we are at cultivating new generation, but at the same time, you are introducing certain skills and knowledge uh, to make sure that this generation entered the industry with the certain uh, knowledge. So in a way that there is a certain similarity, but at the same time, it's very difficult to claim that you know one designer and the other designer, they have a very identical practice. But on the other hand, if you see fashion designers as a collective, there is certain culture, they speak certain language, and they, I mean, the language, I'm not talking about the vocabulary that we are using, but certain, you know, tendency or preference or certain attitude that we cultivate. And in a way, even London College of Fashion has its own culture, Central St. Martin has a culture, Alto University has its own culture, etc. But what I want to say is that as a collective of individual designer, they have certain culture shared by them. Uh, fashion system, it can be very local, tiny, but you know, I'm, I can even scale up to global. Uh, but I will tell you what it means by fashion culture in a way. And when I was looking into this, I mean, this was uh, based on the study that I conducted. I, I came, I concluded, I identify different aspects from the practice and the culture. Uh, the triangular part is the practice, the circular part internally and externally indicate the culture of fashion design. But I will tell you, I will walk you through very quickly what I uh, came across when I, from my research. So the individual practice of fashion design, firstly from the dimension of process. So in a way that the, from the point of view where fashion design considered the process, I came across this very rather good theme of continuity. So it's more than, I mean, there's this duality. So designers constantly think of what can be the signature look, but at the same time, they have to pay attention to then what is the new that they introduce in every season. So there is this coexistence of the signature look and the return of the eternal return of the new, uh, famous quote from Ripobetsky, but this coexistence make also, I mean, it can be easily observable from the uh, actual practice of design. This is uh, one Finnish uh, designer uh, brand's clothes that I captured in their store. It's from different collection, but certain theme emerge. You can see that it's from one designer seeing this certain bunny shape or, I mean, how you, however you want to call, but certain visual theme that you can recognize, and this can be seen as a okay, this is from one designer, if you know certain look, but it's coming from t-shirt to dress to shirt to all sorts of piece of clothes. And this newness in different look, different color and different shape or whatever, uh, and the signature look, this coexistence was heavily 
consider when th whenever they are seeing, like considering the process of their design practice. While in terms of outcome, they are of course more than thinking of single item they are because they have to come up with many pieces together. So of course they consider like some important piece, you know, carefully uh, crafting, but at the same time it's very different than if you think of furniture design or, you know, a uh, very, you know, uh, artwork that heavily focus on one single item. So we are, a fashion design tend to think about, you know, the collection of items more than a single item. And this is well represented in this picture. The also Helsinki based fashion designer uh, present in the one of this event in local area presenting her work showcasing the whole look in the room space of room from hat to shoes to you know different clothes and individual practice of fashion I mean the last part of the practice is dimension of use and when we think about the use I mean dimension of use you know we are thinking of designers own you know creation like as a cloth but because it's there is a, this other other people engaged in this process is a certain way of communicating with other people through the material of cloth. Then there is a limited, I mean, unlimited way to interpret, you know, the way the creation of cloth is made. So in a way that uh, the often time though the fashion designer tend to think that you know they always think of the use dimension. How is you know how it can be contextualized in certain way. They often think of like, okay, this clothes, I'm thinking of like the people in Japan, uh, how they would wear something like this, and then somehow project with this kind of campaign image with certain model or certain backdrop or, you know, different accessory and et cetera, that somehow symbolize certain context of use. And moving to the culture of fashion design, the shared culture. And I think this part I have, I'm very much interested in more than even the practice part, because as I said, individual practice, I mean, if you think of this three aspect, the context, collection, continuity, if you think of the individual designer, I mean, is there a certain commonality? Yes, but at the same time, if everyone in the fashion industry or system practice this way, it's a bit questionable. And then if you think of also, if this makes fashion design unique compared to you know, other designer, I mean, you can say that you know, some you know, uh, pottery maker or Itala or you know, Arabia, if you think of this brand, they also come in the many pieces together nowadays, not just like one piece of dish <coughs> or cup. They introduce new collection with the many, many pieces together. So in a way, it's hard to just claim that this is unique aspect of fashion design that no other designer do. It's a bit dangerous claim that I was disappointed me finding out when I was in the process of design. But here, the culture of fashion design, actually that's where I found actually the uniqueness of fashion design emerge. Uh, because if you think of design, there is a certain way why we are making something. And then if you think of fashion design, question ourselves, are we making something to solve some problem? I mean, here I mean problem not like a, you know, putting the <laughs> sleeve correct way or mending certain hole. I'm not talking about this kind of problem, but I'm talking about a bit complex social problem that require more than you involve, like people working with different, you know, uh, participants to address certain complex issues. So in a way that fashion designer, I mean, maybe more than Misty Eye, if you think of this kind of image of how fashion designer present their final outcome, this doesn't solve any problem, right? Maybe it makes us forget about actual problem we may have personally. <laughs> <laughs> or, but then this actually image represents what fashion design actually chase after, which is introducing the newness, sen new sense of, 
I mean, new sensibility, something that we didn't know before or we didn't realize before, the value of something that we kind of forgot. So in a way, that makes us think very differently. And that's what fashion designers often think when they are designing something, more than you know, solving certain problem. And that is more coming from inside out to impact on the practice. Uh, this is more from the outside in, how fashion design practice is situated in the production system, which we can't really get away from because, as I said, fashion is something, well, what fashion designer can make is only clothes. And then fashion, I mean, clothes is collective production. You can't make, you make some pieces if you are having very small line of collection, but oftentimes you are actually working with you know, countless people, whether in person, on email, or all many different layers of relationship. And this also situates fashion design extremely different than other subfields of design. You know, there are, I mean, in, I mean, furniture design, textile design, architecture, urban design. If you think of what kind of production system they have and that situate their own practice, they deal with extremely different relationship. So from this production, I mean, this is one example, a screenshot of my spring shopping attempt. Uh, I was using, I was checking just website to see, okay, maybe what, what do I get for, maybe for this trip, let's say. And then I was like looking in this one website in the UK based retailer, and then come across this quite interesting information. This is made in Japan, this clothes, piece of clothes. But then I'm located in Finland, but then I'm checking the US-based website. You know, this is like how fashion is somehow, is so complex and heavily, you know, there are so many layers of relationship that we are dealing with uh, without noticing. So in this kind of the, the material production that situate, you know, how fashion design practice, uh, this also situate, I mean, this, uh, uh, linkage also is considered as one of the quite interesting uh, cultural aspects that situate fashion design. So this was uh, somehow the main finding that I came across from my research that I start from the research, but that consists of, I mean, I'm not gonna spend more time here, but just showing that how I get to this conclusion from looking into how fashion designer practice and what they say about their own practice and et cetera, and then identify you know, different themes around fashion design thinking that I felt satisfied finally that, okay, this can be considered as something we can consider as a, some unique contribution or how fashion designer somehow work in, in our own community or in our own system in comparison to you know, other subfield of design. And then moving to part two, uh, I will be a bit brief here because it's more about actually application of this first part of my research into particular context of Helsinki or Finland. Uh, and then bringing one also scholars, uh, Danish scholars uh, quote. Uh, I was heavily inspired by her work, uh, Liz Kopp, to ask question on placemaking and she asked question what do fashion designer produce that is significant for the nation and back then I was looking into like this kind of question you know what other you know this different contribution to different layers of society beyond industry uh, and I came across this question and then I thought this was perfect fit to what I'm seeing back then in 2014-15 like emergence of this countless grassroots fashion initiatives. And with that timing, I was able to follow the growth, rise and fall of the one uh, in initiative, Pre Helsinki. And it was, you know, as I said, grassroots ex uh, initiative. Now it doesn't exist, but so you can consider this was as an entrepreneurial practice back then. But it was in the beginning, it, uh, co-founder of Prehelsinki, now head designer of Marimekko. She was talking about 
I mean, she's also quite well connected internationally, but at the same time, as a co-founder of this Prehelsinki, she recognized uh, there is a reason for certain uh, international event that pay attention to designer, but this line is important, so I highlight. So they realized that they can't claim that there is a fashion week in Helsinki because of the scale and uh, rep reputation, etc. And they didn't want to you know, chase that way, but rather develop something a bit different, like Pre Helsinki. So in a way that they intend to introduce something you know, indie and where people can actually get to know designer and get to know the culture of Finnish fashion in a way, kind of more under deeper understanding. So as a, in the process of building this the initiative, they were, uh, they are, in the process of making this Prehasinki, they are basically connecting, you know, new relationship because, you know, if you think of London, it's like a, this kind of infrastructure is given, if you think of, but from, I don't know, from how many years, right? But country like Finland, there's no industry. It's hard to think that there is a country that doesn't have fashion industry, but there, there are, like Finland, you know, like a Marimekko is a maybe one brand that you may recognize, but it's hard to say it's like the fashion brand. It's often called the cult fashion in a way, but that is not a, I mean, one brand is not industry. So then in that kind of environment, how do you then, you know, survive? What do you do as a, you know, with the fashion event? Then what they do is like, you know, coming up with the, different people who have a bit of experience globally, locally, uh, in, the, in the cultural industry, and uh, also heavily involving the designer. They are building relationship, like they are learning by actually doing every year some actual event, inviting people from outside, but internally discussing with the politician to university educator to, you know, different things, different people, involving people to realize then how we can actually, you know, turn fashion, I mean, fashion as an important subject for country like Finland. So in a way, you know, if you think of Finland, it's a known design nation, but it's never been fashion nation, uh, especially in comparison to its uh, neighboring country, Nordic countries, like maybe Denmark, Sweden is more recognized, but still it's very distant from, you know, fashionable city, but then, they are putting effort to then think of then how about us? What should we, how should we present ourselves to be not like the another, you know, London, another Milan, another Paris, another New York, but as a Helsinki, how we can uniquely position in this global landscape of fashion industry or fashion system. So this is actually the very typical image of their event. You see some people with a bit funky clothes, but there are a mixture of people. They are from local international, like from educator to from different magazine editor to, I don't know, some even some ministry people or some professor, designer, of course, buyer, etc. They gather together, like just mingle, get to know each other. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, you know that. I mean, so making connections in a way. So I went there and immediately get to know many of them. And then there are, it was quite engaging event in a way. So in this process of like, you know, making meaningful relationship or making fashion more relevant for Finland and Helsinki, the designers, fashion designers, but they are playing very important role inside out of the initiative. So inside organization of Pre Helsinki, there are community members. The designers are heavily involved as a not as a just like a member, like often the fashion week is like the designer, they just participate to present their work. But actually the organizers themselves are fashion designer quite heavily involved. So in a way they understand fashion designer, uh, the, they are representing somehow. So then they, com they cultivate their own culture and they are building this certain membership. But externally speaking, they are somehow introducing new category of fashion week and they are constantly introducing new identity. So in a way they play different also role there. And in between of this, they are, you know, they tell different story. I mean, 
different involvement they uh, they are engaged in and outside of the placemaking of Helsinki, Finland. And this was more or less the uh, latest version of my research. But then this got me thinking also, another British scholar. <laughs> I didn't mean to prepare this way, but you know, yeah, somehow it's somehow it's all from UK. <laughs> but the Joan Antwis will talk about on her uh, seminar work uh, the importance of body and especially in relation to the place. So that's where I connect the, with the notion of placemaking because there she talks about the body being the place and uh, in a way I interpret that as a you know, fashion design playing the role of placemaker there, not on the physical geographical space, but also on the skin or human body, which is also the place where we somehow engage in very intimate level. So in a way, using their you know, dressmaking, image making, they are heavily, I mean, this is another image of the local designer. Uh, they are presenting certain look, but in a way, you know, occupying the body of different individual, presenting both how the clothes is made, but also representing certain look image. So in a way that uh, altogether, it also uh, can be seen as a placemaking of the, on the human body. So to conclude, like fashion design thinking, in my view, is you know, heavily in, uh, influenced by both material clothes and immaterial fashion, impact on this, the different uh, scale of human body and the geographical uh, space. I mean, it can be small city, it can be big city, or even a bit larger scale of like certain region, etc. But you know, it's up to how we define by you know the scale. But this certain level of impact made us made me especially think that you know this is a bit different than what we usually discuss when we think of the role of fashion designer. You know, it's more than just thinking designer play such a role in the industry. It's a bit more than that, I believe. So today I have talked about mainly three things, what fashion design is and what fashion design can be studied, how fashion design can be studied, and lastly, what social role fashion designer can play with the notion of placemaking. And bringing back the, the number that I initially introduced, I mean, in a way that myself was part of that, in a way, uh, looking into only the tip of the iceberg that chasing this tip and didn't recognize what's underneath. I couldn't see, but with thanks to my research and you know, engagement and, I mean, different layers of my personal experience or hardship, <laughs> I could think differently that, you know, okay, maybe we need to think slightly differently to see this as opportunity that fashion design being underexplored, meaning that there is a still many remaining opportunity to be worked by many others, not just for me with the placemaking that was my first and the so far the only attempt, but you know by many of us maybe in this room or in the future many generation after, then we have fruitful relationship that we can re rebuild with the notion of fashion and fashion design. And this was a bit of my doctoral dissertation, Rediscovering Fashion Designer. And uh, in a way, I tried to just somehow package it, somehow the core of it. But I think if you are interested in knowing a bit more, I recommend you to take a look uh, and what it means to, I mean, this parenthesis and with the this making it a bit difficult to actually read. Uh, but I mean, this is a uh, freely available to download in, as a PDF if you search. Uh, but also I gave one copy yeah. to Francesco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you have any question after this session, please let me know. And if you are visiting Finland, Helsinki, 
also let me know. I'm happy to host you or show you around my Helsinki and how I experience as a foreigner. Uh, but I mean, yeah. And thank you very much. That's thank it. You.